some people that are asking, okay, how do I do this same thing on Windows? I can answer that, but I also just want to show you something that you should know if you're a programmer, especially on Windows. Hopefully this helps someone that is totally stuck and doesn't understand this sort of thing. So to start out, I'm just going to open Terminal. This is Windows Terminal, but it's essentially going to be the same if you're using Command Line or PowerShell or approximately the same. It might be tiny differences. The new Windows Terminal looks a little something like this, and it says PowerShell. I guess it's mainly operating off PowerShell, but it has commands from Linux uh, to some extent. Like, for example, we have ls. Normally with command line, you have to use directory. Uh, so they added some little shortcuts and things like that into this new terminal. But that doesn't fix problems like, what if you type CMake here and try to do your CMake command and it just doesn't work? Well, mine finds it, it says usage and stuff. But what if it just says not found? And same with git, what if you try to do git stuff here and it just says not found? Mine doesn't say not found, as you can see but I can make it say not found. Yours might work fine, and if it does, it's because you either already edited your path, or when you installed CMake or Git or whatever it was, you checked the box that said add this to my path variables. So if you check that box, this is already done, but if you didn't check that box, uh, which I believe by default it's left unchecked, so if you just left everything default, you won't be able to use these from your terminal. So I'm going to hit my start button, type in, let's just type in path. Um, that's good enough. So you want to find edit the system environment variables. There's a million different ways to get to this on Windows. Just type in path after hitting start is one of the easiest in my opinion. And just open this up. It's in your system properties under advanced. It automatically goes there. And you just click environment variables. So what we see here is two different sets of things. I have environment variables for your account. So when you're logged into your account, which I'm logged into Matt, yeah, so I'm logged in as Matt, so I have all these environment variables. But then you have ones that are just for your system in general. So you have one of them labeled path right here, and that's the main one we're going to focus on today. And you can either double click on it, and you can see the full list of them, or you can click edit, see the full list of them. Uh, and you can also do the same thing down here. You'll see path, and you can edit them for, this is basically for everybody, anybody who uses your computer. now. You have to kind of decide whether you want things in your user environments or in your system environments. I typically do it in system if it's like something that in general should be available to everyone. And if it's just my own personal thing, I'll do it in my own. And now for the hot trick. Yes, you hit edit. You can see in here there is git, there's cmake. Occasionally you'll just have to make corrections in here too if something goes buggy too. So let's go ahead and remove git and cmake because those are going to be examples. Delete delete okay 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 we got to restart the terminal it's pretty normal for your terminal to not see changes until you restart it so now if i type it yeah it has no idea and this is where people often get stuck they're like i haven't installed i i don't know why i i, I don't want to have to use the the gui every time for cmake i want to just do in command line well you have to add it to your path that's the big thing so let's go back in here type in path go back to environment variables look for path there's path edit the path and this is where you need to make sure you add it so let's put that in there it's just program files slash git slash bin and there's also one for cmake you could essentially do this for anything you could do this for your batch files if you want to just be able to run them from the command line okay relaunch the terminal type cmake and it now works type git and it now works. So now you can go about using CMake from the command line and you can go about using Git from the command line. Now a big difference from my Linux tutorials and you know Linux CMake, I was doing most of that work on Linux. Uh, and so I was mostly using the GCC uh, compiler. So Windows doesn't have the GCC compiler. You can install WSL and that will give you the GCC compiler. You can also use Ming GW, which I believe someone left a comment about. He's pointing to a source, pointing to where it wants to build, but also a dash G for generator in his Ming GW generator 
make files. So you can do that if you're using a Ming GW a compiler. All right, so just going to CMake's uh, website, there's a bunch of different ones for a bunch of different compilers here. So you gotta know which compiler you're using and which how you want your make file to be processed and all that. If you have Visual Studio and that compiler all installed, you can do the dash G with one of these Visual Studio versions. So now you should be able to path to your source and run CMake on your source and, and do stuff with it. Let me see if I can get a little example here for you guys. Make a directory called just test. All right, very good. So let's go into test here. And let's put some code in here in a make file and see if we can get uh, Visual Studio to generate. Okay, so I went ahead and made a few files here, just echoed in some return zero on the main for main.cpp. And I just made a quick CMake file right here that just, uh, just says add executable, basically it has some new lines. So let's make sure all these look fine. So we can still launch Visual Studio Code here. And let's just take a look at these, make sure they came out okay. Looks like it didn't take the new lines correctly. So I am going to just go ahead and manually fix this up a little bit. One of the things about Visual Studio Code is, I believe it's not gonna see CMake unless you have it in your path. So I think that's one of the places where people get stuck. Someone recently asked, how do I set up libraries with uh, Visual Studio Code? And I would say the easiest way is to just use CMake's uh, library management stuff. You can set it up so that it talks to the libraries from VC Package Manager. And that might be the easiest way. If a lot of people really wanna see that video, I could show you how to do it step by step but uh, we're gonna stick to the project at hand here. Let's go ahead and just say hello world in here though, because just to know that it ran. So if we run this, we should get all of that good stuff. So what we can do here to run CMake, CMake-source is where we are, dash build. Let's, let's make a build folder. And, and we need to specify our generator. So we're gonna use the Visual Studio one. And it looks like it's not happy about something. File starts with byte order mark that is not UTF-8. Configuring incomplete, errors occurred. Okay, so it's not happy with our files. However, it did try to run. You can see it made the build folder, did some cache stuff here. <laughs> Let's figure this out. I guess we gotta figure out this UTF thing. Let me just Google it a little bit. But basically we, uh, let's just remake it here. Uh, copy all this text, delete this, and just remake it here. So we'll just try the same command again. There we go, now it's happy. Very weird bug, so yeah, you occasionally run into stuff like that and you just gotta figure out how to fix it. So here we go, you can see it working here. It found the source, the build folder, and it selected the uh, windows as our generator. So it is now grabbing all the information from the latest one. So you can use any of these generators once you have the CMake set up to do the same thing on Windows that I showed on basically all those CMake tutorials where I was using Linux. So let's see what we got here. We got a test.solution. Okay, it hasn't compiled yet. So we can either open it with Visual Studio or we can compile it from here. It looks like it's just under your program files and in this bin folder you will find an application. So this is the path we're going to need for what we want to do. So let's add this to our system environment variables uh, path. So there's our new path all the way to MS build current bin. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. And now let's see if we can invoke MS build. Oh, we got to restart this thing, right? Let's see if it sees MS build. It does. Okay, so now we should be able to run uh, MS build on our project and build it. And uh, there's a lot to this. I'm really giving it a very simplified overview. So after I'm done, I'll show you some documentation you can go to if you want to read further. But first, let's get back to our project. We do a directory. Well, we're in the same directory that we have open in our editor. And uh, we've already generated the whole thing. So now all we need to do is build that. Uh, solution or a project. Let's do an MS build. 
uh, star dot solution test dot solution see what happens now I would expect this to build everything and there we go it did build there were zero warnings zero errors so I was reading that you have to do it on a project like a VC project but I guess on a solution works too on a solution it's probably just going to build everything you can see it left all the defaults like debug and stuff like that so you can change this you can pass it options and i'm not going to do that here but i'll show you where you can read more about that if you want to mess with that kind of stuff so now we should be able to actually run our file that's like the next thing we want to do let's take a look let's see if we can find test uh, executable in here somewhere oh it's going to be here under this debug not x64 debug but just debug all right now let's run test.exe and it didn't find it oh i typed in text and there we go, we get our hello world. All using CMake Visual Studio Code and compiling with the Microsoft Visual Studio Compiler. Hopefully this helps you going forward. And I uh, hope you all have a super good new year. Special shout out to my patrons. I would love it if more people would join this year. We have a private Discord where we chat and, and figure out things and that's where you can get sort of advanced access to me where I will talk about a lot more than I normally would and answer your questions and so if you want to be involved in a new coding and video editing and technology community in general uh, feel free to do that you just got to be any level member and what else I feel like there's something else I don't know I guess I just want to say thanks guys I really appreciate all the people that watch and all that stuff and I always feel weird saying this but it's true like it's definitely it's well, it's definitely changed my life in ways that I didn't expect. I never really expected to have a successful, or I'm not. I don't want to say successful, but uh, you know, just a channel that people even watched. I was kind of just playing around when I started. All right, well, I'm gonna call it. I'll see you guys later. Peace out and keep coding.